thanks to Jason here, um, six years ago I was invited, having worked at Alzheimer's Australia for many years um, in a support group and counselling capacity. Um, as an art therapist I was invited to try and set up an art program and um, I can't believe it's six years now. But we've really just gone from strength to strength and I suppose I'm just sort of just so thrilled to think that it's been so successful and it's, it's, there's a lot of, lot of far-reaching art happening out there. So it's just been really quite kind of teary for me to think we've come a long way, you know, in these six years with art. And, um, you know, art's not very well represented, I have to say, out there. I think there's only two of us art therapists at Alzheimer's Australia, you know, right around Australia, and I think that's quite sad. Um, is there anyone here who I could speak to later about setting up art? Is there anyone here, you know, who might be thinking about doing more art in their facilities or, or with their groups or with their individuals? That's excellent. Okay, so before I start, a couple of little plugs. I've got a beautiful book here from our library. It's called I Remember Better When I Paint. And I think that's really important to think about, that art isn't just art. It's, it's instrumental in doing a lot of fantastic things. For people with dementia, they can often they think better, they think more clearly, they feel better. And they can, you know, they remember better. They just feel better about themselves. And there's some fantastic research... Arts for Dementia is a UK-based um, program in, based in London, and they've done a, a whole year's research last year, and it's called um, Reawakening the Mind. And if you just go on the website, you can download an entire <coughs> research program, and the, the results are just phenomenal. You know, 86%, 96%, 98% people just are just doing so well with their arts. That was a mixture of arts, that was not just um, painting, it was um, performing arts, music, movement, you know, circus, all the kind of big creative arts, but amazing results. Art programs have so much to offer. Now what's fascinating for me is that they're cognitively stimulating and they can be calming at the same time and it's amazing to think that you could set people down with some painting and proper paints and people get really extremely excited and very stimulated and then you give them some clay and then they'll calm right down so you can really use your art according to what your needs are nonverbal um, it's a it's a art is a language that doesn't require any speech you know which is pretty amazing Im improved confidence we see that all the time it decreases isolation people become close in their relationships and they learn heaps of skills and we've lots of people in the audience have worked with me in our, our art group people learn skills and they remember skills so I don't believe what you hear people can always learn skills and it's heaps of fun and we have so much fun and laughter so our model started um, six years ago and interestingly enough the programs that we did design are still running well now there's the slides are a little bit stretchy, so you'll just have to imagine them a little bit more pushed in. We're still running the same group of... Now, this lady here is sadly... She's passed away now, but she was in an aged care facility when her son brought her to our Artistic Adventures program, and she'd always painted. In fact, he, he brought me to her where she lived in her residential facility, and, and she, he said, I want to show you a few things that my mum did, and he brought out... He, well, he staggered out with two great big portfolios. It was her life's work through her life in the UK, coming to England, working in aged care. Her husband was a nurse. You know, her whole life was in those two portfolios. And I said at the time, think about maybe photographing the artwork and having it in some little albums that she could just flip through because really to drag out all these portfolios is more than most people could do. And he hadn't thought of that. And it was just a nice thing to do. If you've got clients with artwork, please photograph them. So we have four main options, which is um, individual art sessions at home or in the aged care facilities, and with DB Mass also. Now our art gallery access program, um, both studio sessions and art gallery tours, um, the group art sessions in day centres, <coughs> and staff training in art and creativity, which is very popular. So for, the, for an individual art experience, this lady I worked with for four years um, she had a history as an artist and she was very depressed and she was in a facility. She came from the country and we spent um, half a day every week for four years or three and a half years painting and she just loved nature and I loved nature and we had a very, very happy time together until the, and sadly the time came when she 
was too distressed to paint anymore. But that was just, you know, we'd had our journey together. Now, this is an interesting little slide. This gentleman has sadly again passed away. These artworks are reminders of people's lives with us. <clears throat> the topic that day was, can you think of a picture, can you think of a time, um, a happy time that you spent um, in the country? <clears throat> and he remembered this caravan. And he, he turned, he'd never, he was, a, he was a journalist, he'd never picked up a paintbrush. He was looking a bit, you know, bemused. And I walked around the room and I came back and he'd just done this, written it and everything, and drawn a caravan. There you go, Caravan in the Paddock, 1951. Just came, from, just came from nowhere. Now, the first program we started, it was a pilot program, Moments with McCubbin. If anyone's familiar with the art gallery here, Moments with McCubbin. McCubbin was, um, we had a beautiful retrospective five years ago, and that whole year's program <clears throat> was based around a trial pilot to see how people went with a guided tour and a hands-on session. This is the second part of the five-week program, which is, um, you can see the, the purple gloves that people are wearing. <clears throat> it's a touch tour of sculpture. So the second, the second session was looking, third session was looking at sculptures. And people were allowed to touch fine works of um, art, like these sculptures, and they could also touch wooden pieces, which was just beautiful to see. And men in particular loved to feel where the joins were, how that wooden piece was constructed. A lot of people particularly liked that wooden um, area. Now, you may or may not know, but this whole program has stemmed from New York. Uh, Meet Me at MoMA's stemmed from, well, a marvellous man called John Ziesel, and he was instrumental in setting up this big art program, probably going back about 14 or 15 years ago now. He set up a program where people with dementia and their family members, husbands and wives, could come and look at great works of art in their collection. And... Um, it was just a marvellous program. It kind of travelled a bit around the world. It went to Canberra, and then when Jason and I had a chat, it, we thought, could we bring it to Perth? And we did. So I made a wonderful discovery. I met an old colleague who worked at the Art Gallery of West Australia, another art therapist, and she said, yes, let's, let's go for it. So for a whole year, we did this pilot program. And you can see the group here enjoying, again, the, the wooden sculptures here of the tables. So we had 200 individual visits. Uh, people with, with dementia living in residential care were one group. We had two groups of people with dementia attending day centres. And then we had couples or individuals living at home. And it was really a look at how would that pilot program look like after a year, what were going to be the highs and the lows. So we had 200 individual visits by 60 people living with dementia. And the outcome was just fantastic. So if you can see here the guides are chatting with some of our um, visitors. Everybody was very excited. There was stimulation, social inclusion, reminiscence, friendship, enjoyment of gallery experience, and the rediscovery of intellect and art appreciation. Now, since that time, one of the original hostels that came to us for six weeks, they developed their whole art program. She said, oh, Jackie, we're so excited. We're setting up a whole art program. We're buying the desk easels. We're buying the art materials. And we're setting up a whole exhibit area in our day centre. And it's still going strong out at Byford Graceford Hostel. So the other spin-off really was what seemed to be clear after that one year was that the gallery itself was deciding to take on a program of art and memories so that people with dementia could visit the gallery who were living in the aged care facilities. But we felt there was a real need for couples. There was not much for couples where individuals can really enjoy each other's company, they can do something stimulating, they can have a lot of laughs, they can meet new people. You know, the day isn't spent around care needs, it's to do with trying out an art material they've never seen in their life, have giving it a go you know, seeing what happens. And that's what's running now. Artistic Adventures is now in its fourth year. We welcome visitors and students. You're welcome to come along. We have a very stimulating, um, fun time. So you can see here the lady doing her beautiful monoprint. So participants gain new skills and interests. And you can see with her husband there, she's peeling off the, the monoprint and thrilled with the result. Beautiful relationships, particularly, you know, with men who sometimes find it hard to come out and meet new people and don't quite know how to connect. Very, very lovely friendships. 
and lots of joy and laughter. This is a picture in the actual uh, studio at the art gallery, and you've got the Greg, the educator, on the left, and um, uh, one of our staff members on the right, and a couple there, Michael, with dementia there, and um, having a lot of fun. And this is our New York exhibit where we all sort of sat in the back of... Um, there was a little section where you could have a photograph taken, pretended you were in, in, you know, in New York, and it's just, people just have... I mean, it's a lot of fun. This lovely gentleman, again, he's passed away now with his grandson, Joseph. Joseph used to come with him on his, when he had school holidays. He, he loved to paint, and he loved to paint with his granddad. So that was really special. And when his granddad passed away, Joseph had lots of these photographs taken so that he could show his school because he was so proud of his, his granddad. And then we have a lovely refreshment. And I think what's important with our program is that yeah, we have this great art experience, either the tour or the hands-on session, but afterwards we have this really lovely hour at the cafe there at the art gallery, and that's a really important part. Don't just do an art program and everyone disappears. This is where you bring people together, you really enjoy each other's company. The, the, the clients meet volunteers and students, and, you know, tremendously stimulating conversation for everybody. So, this is a lovely couple here. Hugo and I consider we are very fortunate to be involved with artistic adventures. Our participation enriches our lives on many levels and we joyfully set off to each session with anticipation and eagerness. And you can just see them working side by side together with the companionship, but they're completely focused on their artwork. And they've never done printmaking before with block inks and, you know, good on them, here they go. And um, Sheila and I, we produce this beautiful booklet twice a year, which is um, a photographic record of all the sessions. And it's called um, Artistic Adventures, for book one, book two. We've got, I don't know, seven, isn't it, Sheila? Got quite a lot now. And uh, each one is just treasured by the families. And they often ask us for another copy because the other one's got chewed up or left in someone's, you know, auntie's house. People just show them off wherever they go. Um, and our gallery educators <clears throat> are extraordinary. They normally work with young primary school students or high school students, and they're working with our lovely team, and they just get on so well with them. And uh, the studio atmosphere, you know, coming into an art studio does generate a lot of respect. Here's a fantastic day. This is um, Mark Butler in the blue pinafore, which you mightn't have seen him in a blue pinafore before and he came to visit us specifically when he came to Perth. He requested to visit our group and we set up a, a beautiful program here with block printing and um, he rolled up his sleeves and did a print. But it's just, a, you know, it's just a lot of fun. Everybody came in and it was great. Now, Art and Memories, the guided tours, that is a spin-off. The art gallery itself um, thought they would start running this program for for residents of aged care facilities, and they, that's free of charge. You can just ring up, book a spot. You can come for once, you can come for five times, it's up to you, and they have their dementia-specific dementia uh, trained guides, and we train their guides every year to work with people with a dementia, and that's been happening for five years now. Now, the other thing I do is staff training, and that is a lot of fun. Um, I can either come to your facility and run a, a group for up to 20 of your staff, or you can come to us twice a year, and we have a whole day's training, and I go through everything. I tell people about art materials, about, you know, how do you recognise one brush from another, what's watercolour, what's acrylic, what's this, what's that. People often have quite a, a you know, short understanding of what's available out there. So it's just a great educational opportunity to bring art to residential care. Amana Living, they uh, jumped in and, and ran with Project Picasso. I helped them set that up and it went from one facility to 12 in 2013. So they're rolling this program out six weeks only, one-on-one, -on -one. volunteers come in and then they end up with the, after the artworks produced and they have an exhibition. So it's very exciting that they've been running that one. And that was their Project Picasso and the gentleman on the right did a whole piece of artwork on his war memories that he was very proud of. And that was, um, so you can see how lovely it is. They set it up beautifully. So where to from here? Well, we just continue as we go. It seems to be working. Um, continuing the art and creativity workshops, uh, a lot of networking, offering training to providers, encouraging, I, I do a lot of encouraging facilities to try and set up art programs um, with permanent exhibition areas because it, you wouldn't believe it just, Art brings people together like, like no other. 
um, expanding the gallery access program to regional WA with new team members, um, encouraging and just explaining that, you know, people learn new skills. It bypasses cognitive decline. Art is just a whole different world, really. And acknowledgements, Australian Journal of Dementia Care and Demana Living, Art Gallery of WA, Graceford Hostel, and our wonderful Sheila Lapping here with all her photographs. So thank you very much. <laughs>